बिस्मिल्लाहमान रखीम डियर स्टूडेंट्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट इज लवली टू इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ आई एम प्रोफेसर अरशद मलिक आई एम प्रिंसिपल ऑफ एच बी एस डेंटल कॉलेज एज वेल एज आई एम रेजेंट ऑफ इंटरनेशनल कॉलेज ऑफ डेंटिस्ट इट इज सो वंडरफुल that uh, by the efforts of the association of uh, dental students which is uh, rather displayed throughout the country and very simply that uh, this whole lectures which we are starting here is for the students for the post graduates and for the people who are going to appear in post graduate examinations this series of giving the basic concepts theoretical concepts in the subject this series is absolutely not clinical or it has uh, no relation with the clinics it is specially with the uh, giving you the absolute concept of a subject on theoretical based for the interest of the clinician we have added certain cases and certain a problem based learning as well that we will orient it with the problem based learning and that will create a very good effect on your learning this is absolutely a remarkable series and you will enjoy in see first series we are starting here is the tempo mandibular joint series and is in this joint series the first task is that uh, you are going to have three episodes of the tempo mandibular joint anatomy <clears throat> there are so many questions regarding the from where sir i am going to study in detail for the student i will prefer that the tan kate is the better book to understand at the undergraduate level but for post graduates it is not only limited that you can go only for the 10k you can have the better options for the textbook uh, getting the detail of temporal mandibular joint or not by the end of the session today we are going to have the abc of the joints then we are going to have the classification then we are going to have the developmental parameters of temporal mandibular joint and then to some extent we will go for the temporal mandibular joint basic anatomy ladies and gentlemen this whole series is basically designed by rehan he is the founder member of international communication for the students and he has generated this series and he has first given me the option that i have go for the temporal mandibular joint during this unfortunate covid 19 episode sitting at your home we will try to give you these services free of cost throughout the month and this time table will be displayed by the gentlemen uh, from time to time i am thankful that international college of dentists pakistan is also participating in full zeal in coordination with the international association of dentists so coming to the main point and in front you can see 
a beautiful animation of the temporomandibular giant with the face. The basic thing is to understand the orientation from where it is placed just see the ear and just by removing the ear it is placed just in front of the tragus the tragal area give the start of the posterior aspect of the or distal aspect of the temporomandibular giant and the, it ends at the level of zygomatic arch there is one zygomatic notch which ends the anterior aspect of the temporomandibular giant this image actually give you the depth of the skeleton that the face is filled with the fat, skin, muscles, and different connective tissue. But when you remove it, you see the actual bone. And you have the orientation that when you remove the bulk, how much the portion of the giant is beneath the soft tissue. If you have the concept, three dimensional movement of the temporomandibular giant and its orientation in the skull. You see on the right side, coming to back. Then coming to left side and just in front. Now in this orientation, just see the angulation of the condyle with that of the angle of the chart. On both sides, it is absolute same. The placement of the coronoid process just on the lateral aspect of the lateral border of the joint lateral border of the orbit coming to coronoid process you see what a straight line is being drawn by the nature what a straight line has been drawn by the nature and see the orientation of the zygomatic arc bulge here and zygomatic arc bulge here and both bulge are with equal distance to the condyle equal distance to the condyle and see the notch, temporomandibular notch and temporomandibular notch. Both you will see at the equilibrium. If you draw a line right from here and go to the second side, you will see absolutely a balanced equilibrium. Just look at this space, which is just on the medial side of the internal surface of the ramus of the mandible and you see here how much God has created the absolute equilibrium and now you again with keeping this thing in your mind again say the, see the equilibrium and see how the orientation of the temporal mandible giant is in the skull if you look at the 
level, right, left, front, superior level, and inferior level. Now I just go slightly inferior. I look at here. Sorry. At this place, you are looking at the condyle from the lower level. You see, you have the forum and magnum. You have the hard palate in front of you. And ending the hard palate right here, then to the angle of the mandible right here. And you see, this is the overlapping of all the structure bony appearance of uh, ramus here and here starts the neck of the and then condyle here is the angle of the mandible and here from angle of the mandible is the and that is the on this side you see on this area you will find a big bony bulk here like and the we just look at the thing this uh, photograph on your right side a b c d you are looking at that this is basically drawn from the 10k book and you can see there the first thing we see is the amphibian skull an amphibian skull, the teeth are just limited to dentatory bone. That is dentatory bone. In the initial stages, this is the dentatory bone, and you see the joint is just simple. And there is a just the articulation is between the terminal portion of the mycal cartilage, which is the basic articular cartilage at that time, and plateau quadrate bar. That is plateau quadrate bar here, and that is the mycal cartilage, which is giving just orientation, which is very simple joint, and that is the amphibian skull. Remember, this skull has uh, dominated whole the earth for many, many years. And uh, there was uh, just a simple orientation of the temporomandibular giant at that time. The time passed, and then it started the reptile skull. The reptile skull, it is in between the articular area and the plateau quadrate. That is a plateau quadrate here, and that is a small giant like structure has started appearing. But what is there? The dentatory bone has increased in size. Here you see the dentatory bone is very small, but with the passage of time, you see the dentatory bone has in enlarged in size, and now it is approaching up to this middle area 
when we see the mammals after this b you see the mammalian era starts and it is our a era where we have generated and you see that in the initial stages of mammalian then dentatory bone is enlarged greatly and you see the appearance of the coronoid process is there right here you see there is no coronoid process in case of reptile but when we come to the mammalian skull there is appearance of the coronoid process and the, what the thing very beautiful is that the jaw articulation is still between the articular and plateau quadrate bone like right here you see there is absolutely no difference of the joint whether it was the reptile or whether it was the initial stages of the mammalian skull no doubt we have the temporal fossa formation here we have the coronoid process formation here but we have no any orientation of the temporomandibular joint and especially if you see the teeth has started giving its very good enlargement and at this stage you will uh, appreciate the canine has given its emergence and the canine is more prominent and there is slight classification of the incisors and the posterior teeth and but yet you see that the definite structure of the molars is not apparent now with the passage of time when the modern human and modern mammalian articulation developed what happened that it has a very good orientation with the temporal bone temporal bone has given a good phase for the coronoid process it is enlarged the temporal muscle is well developed the teeth are being classified in good orientation the molars has developed the mycal cartilage the main thing which we are going to study in detail as well the mycal cartilage has given its orientation with the incus and malleus and given the sphenomandibular ligament which is the remnant of mycal cartilage it has started appearing in the mammalian jaw and that is the <coughs> how the temporomandibular joint has given its orientation with the jaw ladies and gentlemen you are listening to temporomandibular joint orientation and how the evolution of the joint has come to this region after having this concept i will just go that now the joint god has given us and if you just look at the joints you will come to know that these evolution are which i am showing you here is it just a, a 67 mm fetus and there is development of the joint starting no just to see that uh, this area which is just densely packed is the area of temporal bone <coughs> and when you look at c it's round head and this is the initial start of the condylar blastema and together from this to this we will see that this is the giant area but look at this from here you will see the slight orientation of thickening of the connective tissue and this connective tissue is ending right here that is incus and that is malleus now make a concept in your mind that is temporal bone that is condyle that is incus that is malleus and that this is a 
thick connective tissue going on like this. This connective tissue is nothing but the remnant of mycal cartilage. This mycal cartilage is or giving attachment to the malleus and then it is attached to them. And what happens to this end? To this end, the mycal cartilage itself give its movement towards the ear while the condyle remains superior level and this superior level is being given an exception and receival point at the temporal bone. In between, if you concentrate more, see here there is the thickening. And this thickening is the future articular cartilage. And if there you see there is small thin spaces here. This is space and this is space. These two spaces are superior joint space and inferior joint space. This is just to give you a basic concept or the basic orientation of the evaluation of how the joint is evolved. But we will go in detail to give you absolute good orientation. Now, just having a better concept for the joint before going into detail of the anatomy of temporomandibular joint, you must have the concept of the types of the joint. This type of the joint, we generally refer it to fibrous joint, which is immobile joint. Then is the cartilaginous joint. They have the limited movement. And the synovial joint, which we will study in detail. Just uh, if I say that you can see this picture, on a book uh, of histology, oral histology, that is 10K. This is a very good uh, photograph which gives the orientation of the fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial joints. We will take one by one. First, I take the fibrous joint. Look at the fibrous joint, they are immobile. Do not allow any movement or very, very limited movement. Bones at these joints held together structurally, structurally by the thick fibrous connective tissue. It is usually collagen. These joints are important for the stability and protection. Now, these which we say at the fibrous joint, has the further division. They are divided into sutures, syndesmosis, and gum fossils. The structurally, if we say sutures, they are very narrow fibrous connective tissue bone joints. But these joints, are present in the skull, but not in the jaw. In the adults, the bone are held tightly together to protect the brain and help the shape of the face. But in the newborn and the infants, the bones at these joints are separated by large area of the connective tissue, which are slightly flexible right here. <coughs> these are the flexible area of the connective tissue. And these bones in the newborns, they are slightly flexible due to these sutures. But when there is the adult, these sutures are joined by very thin fibrous bonding and that is the immobile giant 
why you are coming into syndesmal system actually this is present in the long bone especially i will give you the tibula uh, tibia and fibula joint you see tibia and fibula are joined by this fibrous connective syndesmosis and they give slight orientation of the movement here these ligaments are syndesmosis joint and they are present in the tibia and fibula in the ankle next uh, is the gum fossa this gum fossa is a wonderful joint between the tooth and the socket which we dental surgeon are going to face all the life they fits into the socket like a pack and connected to the socket by the connective tissue card you well know that is periodontal ligament and that gum fossa we know the detail of this gum fossa we have the different fibers in gum fossa that is uh, you say oblique transeptal vertical horizontal these fibers are present in gum fossa joint of the teeth after having the concept of the fibrous joint we move to the cartilaginous joint these cartilaginous joints are also having a limited movement they have the movement but they have the limited movement ladies and gentlemen this picture is also taken from the book that is called 10k you see they have divided it to the primary cartilaginous joint and the secondary cartilaginous joint the cartilaginous joint in these bones are connected by the cartilage but in case of the primary cartilaginous bone that is synchondrosis and in the secondary with the surfaces there is a difference of the cartilaginous joint orientation just we move forward that is the primary one in the primary you will see the joint is by the hyaline cartilage the best example is by the sternocostal joint where the first rib meet the sternum the first rib meet the sternum here this is the first rib and this is the sternum and they joint with each other by mean of clear hyaline cartilage the same is the first rib and that is right here is the sternum and that is the fibrous joint right here this joint is very important that it give a very limited movement as well now when we are going to the secondary it is a very specialized type of joint this joint is being divided by two things the cartilage the cartilage and in center this fibrous tissue in symphysis hyaline cartilage cover the end of the bone this is the end of the bone this is the end of the bone it is being covered by the cartilage and then these cartilages they are united with each other by the fibrous connective tissue which is called as the fibrocartilage so what happens that these symphysis joint have the flexibility and this joint is also very obvious in case of vertebrae they there are one disc the superior part, part is bone inferior part is bone but when you cut it you will see the in between the disc center there will be fibrous to give a good flexibility ladies and gentlemen this is the detail of the cartilage nesta now we are coming to the main joint which we are going to study here and that is the synovial joint and this synovial joint god has made in such a way that it is giving you a full flexibility and now we are coming to the synovial joint synovial joints are the only joint that have the space between the adjoining bone you see the previous fibrous joints and the cartilaginous joints 
which we have studied in detail, having absolute no space. It is being covered either by the fibrous tissue or it is covered by a cartilaginous part. So there was no space at all in between the bones and the joint. But in case of the synovial, you will find there is always a space. This space is referred as the synovium or a giant cavity. This whole space, which is present in between the two bones, is filled with the synovial fluid. The synovial fluid lubricates the bone. Like you see the engine, there is in the engine piston, you will see there is a piston. Its piston movement is exactly like a synovial giant, but there is always an oil which give me give the lubrication. By the lubrication, there is reduction in the friction and allowing the free greater movement. The end of the bones, here is a very important thing to understand. The ends of the bone are covered with the articular cartilage. There is a definite articular cartilage on the surfaces of the bone. And that cartilage is always hyaline cartilage. The entire giant is surrounded by a capsule, which is called as articular capsule. This cap uh, capsule is very tight and sealed. It do not allow the leakage of any synovial fluid from the joint. So ladies and gentlemen, the synovial giant is one of the wonderful giant orientation where there is two bones, there is synovial cavity, there is fluid, and there is capsule around it, which is holding all the structure. When you think of the synovial giant, it is like this. For the simple photograph, you see that uh, this is a bone that is a second bone these are the five hyaline cartilage right here which is also called as articular cartilage this is bone this is bone this is two articular cartilage surfaces that is the giant capsule and in between that is the joint cavity which is filled by synovial fluid. This is the most simplest interpretation of the synovial giant. And here you see this is giant. This is the cartilage surface. This is the cartilage surface. That is the capsule. And in between, this is the capsular cavity which contains the synovial fluid. But you are coming here. This is bone. That is bone. In between, there is synovial fluid and synovial cavity this is the cartilaginous articular surfaces and that is the capsule right here that is the capsule right here and it is sealing hold the giant and giant cavity after having the concept abc of the synovial giant you see god has made by the function Three joint orientation. These are divided on the axis. You see, there is first is the uniaxial. Giant can move forward and bar backward. You see your elbow. You can move it up, you can move it down. Only one direction. This is one directional or uniaxial synovial giant now is the biaxial biaxial is one is socket which give the movement right right and left right and left second is that your giant can move down and up down and up you can have the round 
movement as well and you have the right and left movement as well so this is what is the joint in your fingers and then is the multi axial you see your shoulder joint you can move in so many directions and that is the multi axial joint example in this now but when you see the body when you see the body in whole of the body if just we say the upper limb starting on the from the scapula coming up to the carpal and metacarpal you see every part is being united with each other by means of joints and these joints are all joints are different joints these god has made these joints according to requirement of the movement according to requirement of the function according to the requirement of the weight lifting according to the requirement of the stress bearing according to the requirement of the fineness how fine work you are going to do with this child so god has created all these six synovial joint just to give you a good interpretation of your work your uh, function and your good skill if any of these joint is disoriented or is suffering or is diseased remember the work of the task which is given given to this joint will suffer a lot and that will affect directly your body and your function and your psyche you will be you will be feeling yourself unsuitable or sometime not suitable in the society just by any problem in any of these six joint just you see the metacarpal you are not going to hold anything if you are going to have the metacarpal problem but if you see the saddle joint and this saddle joint is generally with related to your thumb if it is not working your hand will not work at all you cannot hold the thing same if you go for the carpal you cannot uh, clench your hand you cannot hold your hand in a powerful to go to ulna and humerus joint you can have no have, uh, no flexibility of the joint at this area but when you are going back up to level of scapula all movement is right right from the scapula right extraction of the tooth up one ten ten kilo weight this whole synovial joint are going to cover the development of the temporomandibular joint temporomandibular joint is really a unique joint it starts developing at the third month of gestation the first evidence of the temporomandibular joint begins to form two very distinct mesenchymal condensation remember one thing it is mesenchyme it has no relation with the ectoderm it is mesenchyme one is called temporoblastema and second is called condyloblastema 
and between developing ramus of the mandible and developing tympanic membrane this condylar blastema is appearing just have a recall of the memory that the third month is just you can say 13 weeks in 13 weeks of gestation there is a two condensation of the connective tissue that is temporal blastema and condylar blastema how they appear for your understanding blastema is the mass of cells which has the capability of giving growth to the organ or the body part anything which is under the umbrella of blastema is basically of ABC of giving growth. This wonderful photograph <coughs> give you the concept how the coronal section we have drawn right in the developing fetus which is approximately 51 mm fetus, very small fetus. The bone formation has begun in the temporal blastema. It is the first thing which you have to remember that the blastema which is more active is the temporal one, which give actually the development of the temporal bone. This temporal blastema basically gives you an orientation of two spots. Beneath that is the condensation of the soft tissue right here and that is called condylar blastema. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> this condylar blastema basically giving you the condensation of the connective tissue are generating cells at the level of the condyle. But when you move down, you see this is the mandibular bone developing here. And what is the orientation of the developing bone? That is the mycal cartilage. Mycal cartilage basically remains far below to the condyle. And there is the formation of condensed bony tissue moving above and forming the neck of the condyle right here and a big condylar blastema above and there is there is a, you see there is lack of tissue right above there but there is then starts a very small condensation where this is written the temporal blastema just beneath it you see this is a thickening actually this thickening is the thickening of the articular cartilage which later on developed and they, these two spots, these are basically are the temporal bone. But here you see that in this center, in between this condensation of the temporal blastema and this condensation of the temporal blastema, you will see there is lack of cells here. This is so wonderful to know. So wonderful to note in the very initial stages of the development. Because here we are going to have the fossa. That is temporal fossa. So there is less condensation of the bone here. There is the condensation of the soft tissue formation of the uh, disc. That is the condylar process going on. And that is the fossa going on here. And this is the mycal cartilage, which is just beneath there and giving a condensation line of the 
developing ramus above going up 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 to the neck of the condyle and then the this is the condyle formation ladies and gentlemen this is the very initial stages and this very initial stages you see your whole the almighty god has arranged this tissue when we move forward you see there was two very small thickening and now these two thickening has converted itself into a thick portion and there is a one very good thickened blastema is developed here now this is going to give a portion of the peter's part of the temporal bone this is what the temporal fossa and this is forward moving as you see it is going for the development of the zygomatic area beneath that you see that mycal cartilage has remained far behind and the development developing mandible is moving like this and see the above top is the condylar blastema now here you have to give the orientation because now the fetus is approximately 67 mm and here you see the joint cavity has been developed the condylar end and here there is a formation of the cavity above the cavity there is also condensation of the tissues and above that is also there is lacking of the tissues and then is the bone formation <clears throat> students you see this is going on posteriorly like this this is going on posteriorly like this and that is the joint space and this is the condylar blastema and how the inferior joint space has given its development when we move forward now this is 70 mm fetus the mycal cartilage has gone far behind and above surface you have seen that it has given the uh, conversation of the temporal bone the development of the temporal bone and the base of the skull has been mature and here you see the condylar cartilage is also very mature in the condylar cartilage you see the uh, inferior joint space here you see the superior joint space and in between you see this is the development of the articular cartilage this articular cartilage is anteriorly attached with some muscular structure posteriorly attached with the some ligamental structure and above this is the temporal bone so above is the temporal bone below to temporal bone is the superior joint space and then there is the disc formation and before to this there is the inferior joint space and then is the condyle now here we see the condyle formation here we see the fossa formation here we see the superior joint space inferior joint space and in between we will see the articular cartilage <clears throat> so just giving the <clears throat> background sorry sorry development of the temporal mandibular joint first ossification starts with the temporal blastema then the condylar blastema which start its differentiation into condylar cartilage cleft above the condylar blastema form the inferior joint cavity cleft below to the temporal blastema form the upper joint cavity and the appearance of the primitive articular disc in between that 
Now, just see in the later stages, two distinct mesenchymal condensation appear in the condyle and temporal blastema. This is the 12th week. Then both are apart. Then the condylar blastema grow rapidly and close the gap. Bone formation starts in the temporal blastema and condyle remain in the mesenchymal area. Cleft is appearing above the condylar blastema forming the inferior giant space and cleft appears in the below to the temporal blastema forming the inferior joint space. So that is what happened in the development of temporomandibular giant. Now that is the fully developed temporomandibular giant and it is near to the uh, what you say seven eight months. You see the blood vessels they are very apparent here upper giant space lower giant space, then you can see the condylar cartilage and the cart cartilage of the temporal fossa. And when it is absolutely mature and the, there is a, 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 at birth, the temporomandibular giant is exactly like this. You see, the temporomandibular giant, one, the mature, you can see temporal bone. And here you see the mature condyle area. That is the condylar articular cartilage. Superior giant cavity, inferior giant cavity. Now that is the exact giant histologically which appears at the level of the birth. So ladies and gentlemen, we have covered all the stages of the development of the temporomandibular giant. Right starting from the 12th week where the temporal and condylar blastema used to appear and how they mature into pure glenoid fossa, articular disc, condyle, lower giant cavity, and upper giant cavity. Now, just moving forward, you must have the orientation of this picture. You see, this area is of temporal bone. This is coronoid process. This is body of the mandible. This is the mycal cartilage going on. This C is the condylar head. This is articular surface of the temporal bone. This is the cartilage. This is the articular surface of the condylar bone or condyle. That is the disc of the condyle or meniscus of the condyle, this anterior attachment is posterior attachment. But when you see here, this mycal cartilage, now it is converting itself into sphenomandibular ligament right here. And the end of the sphenomandibular ligament is continued. Continue with the ear. This is malleus. This is incus. This is your middle ear. And you see that this is a ligamentous attachment between the middle ear and the condylar portion. And the posterior ligaments which are in connected with the mycal cartilage, now they are moving side by side towards the middle ear and attaching themselves to the malleus. And that is the 
incus which is also giving its attachment to the some portion of the meniscus so try to understand here that the menis incus has the orientation of attachment to the disc by the malleus has the orientation to that attachment to the meccal cartilage or the sphenomandibular ligament get the concept very clear that this portion of the middle ear is indirectly attached to the condylar disc as well as to the sphenomandibular ligament or the remnant of the meccal cartilage so anything happening to the temporomandibular joint remember very nicely will affect the middle ear so clinically talking clinically talking when there is any problem in the temporomandibular joint patients used to ask that there is my ringing sound in the ear i have the problem with the ear so the patient now i have given the clinical scenario the patient with the temporomandibular joint problems will generally say that sir i have generally click sound in the joint but i have the pain in the ear as well but try to understand this is related to temporomandibular joint attachments one attachment is by means of the meccal cartilage or sphenomandibular ligament which is the remnant of the meccal cartilage to the malleus and the remnant of the remnant nay rather posterior ligament attachment to the incus in the middle area this we will study in detail when we are going to study the ligaments after the impromandibular joint <coughs> ladies and gentlemen this orientation of the temporomandibular joint is for the postgraduate students and for the undergraduate student and especially for the pupil who are appearing in the postgraduate examination and they must have the detailed concept of the temporomandibular joint this is this series is uh, especially meant for the postgraduate student and undergraduate student to give the orientation of the anatomical basics of the temporomandibular joint detail today we have covered the abc of the joint we have just gone to have the concept of the joint its position in the skull its orientation and distances from the different vital structures of the joint uh, different joint uh, areas of the skull then clinical orientation where it is present then we have seen the how the radiographically it used to appear in the living structure then we have seen that the how the joint has developed right from the reptile to the mammalian we have studied that this uh, how the evolution has came to this level that we have the synovial joint of the temporomandibular area Now, then we have gone in detail with different joints we have studied the fibrous joint we have studied the cartilaginous joint then we have studied the synovial joint we have gone in the detail with the fibrous joint all three joint fibrous we have studied with the sutures with reference to synchondosis with reference to uh, gum fossas then we have gone for the cartilaginous joint and we have studied the primary cartilaginous joint then we have studied the secondary cartilaginous joint and we have seen their example then we have gone for the synovial joint 
we have studied the synovial joint in detail then we have seen according to axis that there are three types of uni axial biaxial and multiaxial joints and from that we have come to the functional joint orientations and we have seen the six joints functional joints and how these joints are appearing in our different parts of the body after that we have come to the joint what is called as a temporomandibular joint then we have started the temporomandibular joint development before going to the temporomandibular joint development we have seen the histology of the temporomandibular joint and we have seen in the development initial stages at the age of the 12 week we have seen the appearance of the temporal blastema then the condylar blastema then we have seen the how these blastemas appeared and how the condensation started later on we have seen that the more initial ossification has come from the temporal blastema and later on the condylar blastema has developed into basic bone formation then with the passage of time there is appearance of the inferior joint space then appearance of the superior joint space and in between these two, two joint spaces there is appearance of the uh, condylar disc or the meniscus and a last slide which is in front of you is the formation of the whole joint and this is appearing just when it develops and that is the whole development of the temporomandibular joint ladies and gentlemen our next episode which we are going to have is the joint bones of the joint and that we will cover in detail the condylar bone we will cover in detail the glenoid fossa bone we will cover in detail the synovial bones synovial area synovial fluid its mechanism its formation and its detail with reference to your postgraduate and your undergraduate examination and specially it is in detail for the first year bds student it is for very good for the third year and the final year bds student it is best for the, the students who are appearing in part one of the fcps if you have any question we have the full question period which is will be displayed before you by the our were the um, organizer dr rehan before you and from this ladies and gentlemen today's session is over and uh, i refer back to rehan rehan it is over to you assalam alaikum thank you so much dr Rehan, arshad it is over to you thank you so much dr arshad for your very kind lecture actually it was a series of lecture and th there are three sessions of this lecture you will be updated through our facebook page and website whether when it is going to be other sessions so kindly stay tuned with those pages and youtube channel and this whole lecture will be available also at youtube channel whoever miss any part of this you can see there thank you so much if somebody has any question i am opening the mics you can ask the questions yes I, yes sir uh, one question i have received that uh, they are saying that uh, which is the best book uh, uh, for the temporomandibular joint anatomy i said there is no book which is called as the best book every book is good book and best book uh, you can have a, if you are the student of first year 
or uh, you are appearing in the um, examination of the postgraduate, uh, I uh, recommend uh, the Tankate is the best book uh, for this purpose. And uh, you can have the good orientation for that book. Otherwise, there are so many postgraduate books uh, with a um, temporomandibular giant, which I am uh, uh, consulting three, four books as well. And uh, uh, you will find that, inshallah, I will try to cover every damn detail of the temporomandibular giant. And uh, first, we have covered just giants, and that's why I've gone in very much detail. And uh, we will go into detail uh, because uh, these details are generally not available. And that's why I have uh, given you the detail of the histology and detail of the development of the temporomandibular giant and uh, to give you a, a better concept. Yes, anybody else? It is our channel. You can subscribe it and you can visit it at evening. Hope so. The lecture will be available at evening. And next, our website is These lectures are available. You can register and you can watch video from this link. You can attempt online quiz from this area and you can collect your certificate from this link. Everything will be available whenever it will be uploaded. These are four lectures which are currently active. This one is paid online teach fighting workshop and rest are free of course. So now you can you all can leave. Thank you so much.